Changing gears for a minute. This uh, this is an old Rolls Royce, looks like. Well, maybe it isn't an old Rolls Royce. No, it's an old Renault. Um, and it, it's a it's an original car. It's in the preservation class. And this is what they call a skiff body. And so you can see the uh, the woodwork in the car and the brass screws. And uh, wow, is this ever a cool car? You know, it would date from you know 1920 something like that. And there's a big movement now to preserve this leather and so on. But uh, I like these pre-war cars. I think they're undervalued. Uh, oh, look at the front end of this. Um, undervalued compared to the post-war cars. They're, of course, more challenging to own and difficult to drive and, and so on. And, uh, but uh, I think for, for what they are and the history that they represent, uh, I think they represent like tremendous value. Um, we saw that car on the Pebble Tour, and that's uh, King George's uh, Rolls Royce, which is uh, pretty cool. And this is also, and this is also a preservation car, so uh, we get a little bit more room to look at it. But uh, we can see the, the leather-colored fenders and the original uh, brass headlamps. It's got a prize in preservation class. And uh, you can't argue with the provenance of uh, King George V of England. So there's the horn, and uh, what a great old car. Sorry, it's not a Rolls Royce, it's a Daimler. There is the insignia, the royal insignia. It looks like this car is getting judged right now, and then to get it judged, uh, you have to start it. And it looks like he just sprayed some ether into it, and uh, look at this car. So. It's got a magneto driven off the front of the engine, and uh, like I, you really, it's re really interesting to uh, to look at these pre-war cars because there are all kinds of variations in the way that the engines were um, constructed. So it's a great challenge to see, uh, you know, how they're put together and how they start and so on. So this one's going to erupt with probably a big bang and a cloud of smoke here. He'd spray the ether in and then he'd adjust the, uh, I guess, into each cylinder, open it up, and uh, then probably turn it a couple times and then and then uh, uh, engage the magneto, turn it over and see it go. I don't know how big this engine is, but it's a, it's a straight six and it's probably a 15 liter engine or something like that. Okay, so what do I do? Unscrew that, releasing some fuel, uh, opening everything up again, and now I guess we try again. Let's try them. These guys taking a stride, but you can tell that uh, the car's worked probably, you know, for the last year, and now it's just failed. Just uh, it. Uh, Probably the plugs are wet or whatever. I've read about this car. This is a preservation class now. And this is a lightweight E-type. And it was, I think the guy the guy hid it from his wife and, and piled a bunch of stuff on it and let it sit there for 50 years or 40 years or whatever. And then it was resurrected. And uh, I think there was only a little bit of paint that was blown in it. And, uh, and uh, but it's essentially an original uh, E-type uh, lightweight uh, Lightweight racing car. Um, I think Lynx Engineering, if I recall, did all the work on this. But uh, it's an amazing story, an amazing, amazing find. Um, it, it, it has to be a candidate for the preservation class. This car has a race history as well. And here's a Fiat 8V. So this is the supersonic car, uh, body by uh, Gia. And uh, I believe this is in the preservation class too. So this must be the one that just sold for. 1.7 million dollars, I bet. And uh, there, there is one of these cars in Calgary in the Focus Auto Collection. But uh, two-liter, eight-cylinder engine. And, but this is probably the most original one in the world. And uh, and, it, and it got a uh, got a huge price. 1953 V8 8V Gia Supersonic. Wonderful. So here's a Delahaye. And uh, I, I have a particular interest in these because these, the, you know, the pre-war Delahays can be millions and millions of dollars. But when you see GFA on them, remember 
exactly what GFA means, but it's a, it's a post-war car. And the market doesn't really value the post-war cars anything as much as the pre-war ones. So you can get these for, oh, I'm not sure exactly, but in the, in the low hundreds of thousands of dollars, as opposed to millions of dollars. And, and I love these, uh, I love these uh, 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 dashes on these cars. So um, a post-war Delahaye uh, is, uh, you know, on my list of maybe one day, you know, if they don't start climbing out of reach, uh, might be one day affordable. And I've got to, you know, forgive me for videoing every um, Aston DB24 uh, Mark III, uh, but uh, but of course, uh, I've got to do it because it, I've, I've, uh, I'm just restoring mine, of course. So they only made, I think, 85 of the uh, convertibles. And one just sold, it was kind of a rough car and a, a right-hand drive car. It just got, uh, I think, 220 at the uh, Gooding auction. This one, this one could be double that because it's uh, a completely magnificent uh, example. And... Uh, you know, I've been snapping photographs of all these cars all day, just seeing, you know, what to uh, what to do to mine. But when I see this, it kind of makes me <laughs> wince at the money I'd have to spend on my car to make it look like this one. But anyway, terrific, um, uh, terrific example. Got to be one of the best ones ever in the world. And uh, this is the latest version of the W.O. Bentley uh, 2.6 liter engine. It was bored out to three. Tadek Merrick joined the company and made some important revisions to the, to the engine, basically completely redesigned it. They had trouble with the head gaskets before. And uh, this also has the now, uh, the first example of this traditional Aston grille. Uh, and uh, and that and the instrument cluster which was carried on uh, for all the DB cars so um, I, I, lo I love these cars a lot I, I can hardly wait to uh, see some progress on uh, on my poor example and I love this too this is a Talbo Grand Sport it's a body by Sauchik and Sauchik has done some of the most outrageous uh, flamboyant uh, uh, bodies on cars I think I think this one could be a, a post-war car again. I, I don't know. Um, well, I suppose it would, it's in the post-war class, so I suppose it is. And it would have had the the Grand Grand Sport engine, so we would have seen that engine uh, with the in the T26 cars. And I think I, I videoed one in the Monterey video. So they would have had a basically a Grand Prix chassis, but with an extraordinary um, streamlined. Uh, you know, uh, Sauchik uh, body on it. Look at all the louvers and uh, how wonderful machine. Um, wonderful machine. Just dripping with, uh, dripping, dripping with style. Some Mercedes gull wings. So they made about uh, 1,400 gull wings. They just shot up in price. And here is one that is exactly the same color as, uh, as Rob's in Calgary. <laughs> so He's going to be pretty happy to see it, although he's got different color luggage, but uh, uh, and he's got a, a competition rim, and I think he's got painted rudge wheels instead of the chrome rudge wheels, but uh, Rob's car is every bit as good as this. At least I think it's the same color. Sometimes the light plays. Is it the same color? Well, maybe Rob's is a little bit darker green. Anyway, great gull wings. They're, they're, uh, they're a pleasure to see everywhere. Here's um, here's the 300 SL Roadster. Same car as the Gullwing, but uh, this one's got some uh, skis and stuff uh, on the back, which is, and, and the fitted luggage. And uh, a very nice display of uh, period literature and so forth. And have a look at this, with the uh, Rolls Fry. So straight six engine, uh, but with uh, dual magnetos, dual no, they're not magnetos. Dual coils, dual distributors, and twin plugs per cylinder. Just look at the engineering and the linkages that, uh, that go on with this car. Just magnificently built when uh, the Rolls-Royce really was the uh, best car uh, in the world. Now, I don't know why. The magnetos, of course, are mechanically driven, and these appear to be mechanically driven, but there's also coils which, uh, which aren't. So I suspect this has 
two plugs per cylinder, two magnetos, twin coils, and it probably fires on either or both of the coil and the magneto. So it's like a, I mean, most cars have one coil or one magneto, not four of them. So these cars had a reputation for being uh, overbuilt. And uh, take a look at this, um, if I can get a shot of it here. Take a look at this uh, spring here. So you've got the leaf spring and a bunch of leaves and the uh, castellated nuts with the split pins. And, uh, and then you've got the, the leather wrap for the springs. And it looks like, I mean, you've got a sticker saying it's got, a, it has the gator number on it, use engine oil. And then there looks, looks to be uh, an oil fitting on the end. So. So it looks like these springs are uh, are then lubricated, and I'm not sure what those pins are. But again, most cars just have leaf springs and uh, and those U bolts. So and it, so this is a like a really magnificently built and engineered car, and that's why I think these pre-war cars are um, are really undervalued, just because of the you know the work that the work that's required to go into them. You know, this isn't represented in the purchase price, so I don't know how you feel about lemon yellow with a lemon yellow interior, but I'm sure, um, I'm sure it had a great, uh, or I'm sure it uh, have been a welcome addition to any lawn party in the um, Great Gatsby era. <laughs> Here's a, a, another car in the preservation class. This is a BMW 328. So when this is a pre-war car, and one of the best, uh, one of the best pre-war sports cars, as well as one of the most beautiful, and uh, this is an interesting engine. It looks like a twin cam, but it isn't. I don't know exactly why, but it, you see these rods that go between the um, cylinder heads are actually for uh, the rockers. So it's got basically a complex uh, barrel train. And when the war was over, this engine was. Um, you call it remissions, where the, where the where the design of this engine was then given to some British firms, and this became the basis for the uh, the AC Bristol engine car, which had great uh, racing success uh, and also uh, great success in the touring cars for the war. So anyway, a really cool car and a significant uh, engine. And I just absolutely love this car, the Mercedes 600 Pullman. Lawn, I want to say laundrette, but I don't. Maybe I have that wrong. But uh, 6.3 liter, 300 horsepower engine, 430 pound-feet of torque. This thing will still probably do zero to 60 in you know 10 or 12 seconds. And uh, they only sold I don't know maybe a dozen of these, and they all went to heads of state or dictators or royalty. Uh, what a magnificent car and uh, a lot of fun to uh, go take your friends around for a drive. Look at this thing. Built to last a lifetime. Incredibly complicated and you really don't want to restore one. But uh, they, I think they made this car for maybe 15 years or so. From the maybe the mid-60s all the way up to probably 1980. And, uh, and judging by the telephone and the radio uh, antennas here that maybe this is a later car. Anyway, wonderful. Love this car. Ed is so generous to continue to donate his own time to take part in our show. Thank you Ed from the bottom of our collective call for Ed is a long time old man. His cars have won several class awards. Gotta love the paint at Pebble Beach. It's like looking into a can of black paint. 